I'm 28 years old and I've recently been diagnosed with ADHD. Let's talk about it. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Jodie. If you're not, then you might have seen about a week ago, I uploaded a video on my channel just kind of explaining where I've been, what's been going on with me, <laughs> which is a lot, and my new diagnosis of ADHD. Now, I got a lot of lovely comments on that video and I just wanna say thank you so much. I was actually quite nervous. <laughs> I've not made a video in ages and then I picked quite a personal topic, I guess. So I've got my notes here <laughs> just because I know what I'm like. I always go off on a tangent. There will probably be a part two of this video just so it's not crazy long. So if you do want to subscribe, then you can below and then you'll get notified when the next part's up. If you have ADHD, you might forget to subscribe. So <laughs> maybe just do it now. Before I do start, I just want to say, obviously I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a trained medical professional in any way and I would obviously always advise you to seek professional advice however I do think there's something to be said about people speaking out sharing their own stories sharing their journey sharing their truth and that is what I wanted to do today I was diagnosed in November 2022 so it's very early days but it's also very late in the day because ADHD is not something that you can develop as an adult it is something that you will have had as a child if you do have it but if you haven't been diagnosed with it, it's because it's been missed. So although this is a new official diagnosis, it isn't a new thing that I'm living with because I've lived with it my whole life. What is ADHD? Now, I'm gonna read this from an official website. Obviously, it's very brief, <laughs> but you get the gist. ADHD is a neurological condition that impacts executive function, working memory, impulsivity, focus, distractibility, and emotional health. There's a lot to unpack there, right? I'm not gonna go into every symptom of ADHD in this video, or else we would be here for a while. And what I actually wanna talk about today is my personal journey. So I'm gonna talk about how my diagnosis actually came about. I've struggled with mental health since I was a kid, and I've been under various different mental health services. How this diagnosis actually came about was kind of by chance, which now almost freaks me out a bit because <laughs> If this hadn't have happened, I wouldn't be sat here right now and I probably wouldn't even be filming YouTube videos again. Last summer, I was having a really, really rough patch with my mental health. My anxiety was just so bad, I felt like I couldn't function, basically. This then led to me feeling really low and depressed and honestly, I just felt like a complete failure. I felt as though I just couldn't do life right. I'm not gonna go into any specific details, don't worry. There doesn't really need to be a trigger warning on this, I don't think, but just to be on the safe side. Basically, I got myself into a place where I was just feeling defeated by life, to be honest. And I ended up being referred to quite an intense mental health service within the NHS where you are seen by a doctor very quickly. I then met a doctor, she was called Dr. Poppy. I'm sure she's not watching this, but if she is, Poppy, you're my girl. I can't even thank you enough. And she took a real interest in me. I felt like she was really listening to me and really trying to help me. I wasn't really in a very chatty mood, should we say, but she was so lovely so I just managed to get across sort of how I felt. I told her how I felt like a complete failure because throughout my whole life I'd always felt like I was just doing life wrong. It wasn't that I, I wasn't intelligent or I wasn't I mean, my self-confidence has took a huge knock over the years, but I was actually quite a confident kid. I was very chatty, very outgoing, you know, had to be the leader and all the rest of it. But I always felt like my brain was running at some crazy speed. I'd forget things all the time and I'd always be getting in trouble for silly things like forgetting homework and... I'd never remember my PE kit unless my mum had literally put it in my bag and seen me physically take it there. I would leave everything to the last minute. I couldn't finish anything. I would get very into something, and I now know that's called hyperfixation, but I'd get so into something, I'd be tunnel vision, I'd be so driven, so, you know, determined to succeed and full of enthusiasm. And then I'd just crash. I couldn't just focus on that one thing because all the rest of the things in my life would just slip and basically go to shit. I could do it sometimes, but then other times I just physically felt like I couldn't. And I didn't understand why. And I used to think that I was just lazy or stupid or 
thick, you know, I've, I've called myself all these things over the years. But the thing is, I was pretty well behaved. I was polite. I didn't mean to interrupt people. I was just so bloody excited to say what I needed to say. And I also knew if I didn't get it all out, then I'm probably going to forget what I wanted to say. I still did all right at school. I got on well with the teachers because I, I was, wasn't nasty. I was just a bit sort of... I was just a bit cheeky, you know. As I got older and I was a teenager and at high school, I actually developed anorexia. But I do think if I hadn't got anorexia, it might have been more obvious that I had ADHD because I found that at school, because I was struggling with that eating disorder, I sort of became a shell of myself. I was very quiet. I mean, I, I still had all the symptoms in terms of not being able to focus and I think from my own processing I didn't get an eating disorder because I had ADHD and I didn't get anxiety and depression because I had ADHD you know there's a lot more to it I've had other traumas and additional things that may have contributed and also sometimes there's not always a black and white answer but I do think that my anxiety became very very unbearable essentially because my ADHD wasn't treated and obviously the older you get the more responsibilities you have now when I was at home living with my mum and dad my mum knew sort of how to manage me if that makes sense so she kind of organize everything for me and make sure I had my stuff in my bag for dancing or make sure I was on time because she knows I'd be late for everything and that I got on the right bus because I probably end up in a completely different part of the country <laughs> you know what i mean so she helped manage what we now know as my adhd the minute i left home and went to school in in london which is why i moved to london when i was 17 no i must have been 18 yeah i was 18 um yeah it all just fell apart life just became completely chaotic i guess i would say but i used to say i'm chaotic i cannot organize myself sorry i'm really going on i'm gonna cut this bit down because i can always talk about it in another video this is what i do in therapy i always say at the start of the session <laughs> right so i'm gonna tell you something but i'm not gonna elaborate and spend an hour on it i'm gonna just say it and then move on and talk about other stuff one hour later and i'm still talking about it <laughs> i really do feel for my therapist i absolutely adore her but I'm sure that sometimes she must just be like, whoa, <laughs> take a breath, girl. Back to the actual story I'm talking about. So I'm speaking to this psychiatrist and she said, have you ever been assessed for ADHD? My mum had always said, even when I was young, she was sure there was something missing that we weren't aware of that was going on with me, but she never, you know, it was a different time. People weren't as educated. I mean, I, don't quote me on this, but I think that ADHD only became a recognised thing officially in the UK in 1999, I want to say. There was also this whole stereotype of it being young boys running around, being really naughty or being disruptive at school and that kind of thing. And Although I probably was a bit disruptive at school because I couldn't shut up, it wasn't really being naughty and disruptive, if that makes sense. It was more just people would just think, she can talk for England. <laughs> or she can't sit still, or she's always got to be on the go. And my, my mum would combat this with always making sure that I had an after-school club or, you know, dancing this night, brownies the next night. So the doctor says, given just the very brief few things that you've mentioned today would it be all right if you stayed for a little bit longer and we did not a full ADHD assessment because we can't do that right now but you would just fill in a questionnaire type thing obviously I said yeah of course I will and now I know that that was just a very sort of condensed down version of the actual full assessment she couldn't give me that diagnosis there and then she said that we have to make a referral and she warned me that it could be a long wait which I kind of braced myself for because you know waiting times in the NHS as we know can be a huge huge problem and it was really on my mind so then when I got home typical me I decided I was going to find out everything there was to know about ADHD because to be honest I was a bit clueless I'd seen a few things on TikTok and kind of nodded along and thought hmm I relate to that but I'd never sort of explored the idea that I actually might have it and we learned that a lot of the symptoms in women 
can actually present a bit differently to men. There's almost an epidemic of women in their 20s, 30s and beyond that are called the missed generation and the reason for that is because doctors and medical professionals and teachers and you know people that you're around when you're young they didn't know what they were looking for so they didn't notice these symptoms and recognize it as ADHD of course then they didn't get diagnosed and a lot of these women have had everything put down to anxiety or other mental illnesses now you can have both you can have ADHD and also struggle with various other illnesses as well but the way I see it is if you're not treating the ADHD, which is a neurological condition, you haven't really got a proper fighting chance of dealing with all the other things. Okay, on to the next part of the story. I just want to say this is not the norm and I feel lucky beyond words that I had this experience, but I completely understand and it actually upsets me how the wait times for people can be so unbearably long and it genuinely breaks my heart to be honest on other people's behalfs that the wait times for ADHD assessments and autism and many other things I mean don't get me started on eating disorder services <laughs> that's a whole other video obviously we know that NHS is so busy it's so underfunded Again, that's a whole other topic. I actually got a letter, probably, I wanna say maybe like two weeks after that conversation with that doctor. And that letter gave me an appointment date. And I had to look twice because I thought it was supposed to say 2023, but it actually said the appointment was in, I think, I wanna say it was like four weeks. It was about a month away, I think. And I thought, that can't be right. You hear all these stories of people waiting for two years, even four years sometimes. So in this letter, it asked for me to give them a call and they needed to email me some forms that my family needed to fill in. They needed some background from when I was a kid. They also needed me to fill in a few forms. So the actual assessment in itself, to be honest, it was absolutely fine. I was really, really nervous for it and I really worked myself up. The doctor who did the assessment was really, really lovely made me feel really at ease. We did what was called a DIVA assessment. I believe that stands for Diagnostic Interview... something. Now that is a hefty assessment, I will warn you. It is a bit daunting because there's a lot of questions. So the assessment is broken down into a couple of different categories. In fact, I think there's a third category, but that's impossible for me to remember. <laughs> um, but essentially the two categories are hyperactive and inattentive. Now, you can have ADHD with just inattentive symptoms, you can have ADHD with hyperactive symptoms, or you can have combined type, which is what I have. And it all depends on what you score in these different categories of question. And also within the category, it asks if this symptom presented in childhood and if it presents in adulthood. What I would do if I was you and you were gonna be going to get assessed is I would get as much information as you can from people around you just so that you've got a reference point because it can be really hard to remember, can't it, what you were like then. I answered the questions, went through the assessment and then we sort of had a bit of a chat about my school life. Basically, he was just getting as much information about me as he, as he could. Anyway, again, I don't think this is the norm but when we got to the end of the assessment, he just looked at me and he said, you have a very high score in diagnosis of ADHD. He said, you can't be surprised. So I wasn't surprised. I kind of come to terms with the fact I had it, but I think just hearing it from someone is kind of emotional. I felt like finally I had an answer and some of the stuff that I've struggled with or not completed or maybe not done as well as I should have or whatever although it's not an excuse it is a reason so that was a bit of a day and then a few days later he sent me my report and we had a conversation about starting medication so that was my nhs diagnosis experience which i know is very very unique and if you take the sort of average wait time in the uk i would still be waiting for my assessment so of course if you do think you need an assessment for adhd you need to go to your doctor and get a referral to get an assessment which i imagine you'll have to do a similar thing what i had to do with the initial doctor then obviously you will be put on a waiting list now i know someone in doncaster who has been told they have to wait three years i know it's a very complex 
issue as to why the wait times are so long and I'm not going to be able to fix that issue sadly I really really wish that I could but I am really looking for ways that I can make some sort of change and make a difference I have no idea what I'm going to do but <laughs> I'm going to try I also want to help with the eating disorder side of things as well because I think that that system is very problematic and dangerous so I've got a lot on my plate apparently <laughs> maybe I'll just go knock on 10 Downing Street I'm sure they would have loved to hear from me now there is something that I do want to mention that you can use and that a lot of people aren't aware of and that is right to choose I need to do some more research on this and find out some more information because I don't want to tell you the wrong thing and obviously personally I didn't use it but from what I understand right to choose is your right <laughs> to choose the care that you receive through the NHS I don't know if it's for just mental health or just ADHD I'll put a link below but essentially what you can do is you can request for your doctor to refer you to I think Psychiatry UK is the one that most people get referred to possibly ADHD 360 but I would have to check that so the NHS are certain organizations that they will fund if you apply for the funding so you can actually go down that route and again I don't know the ins and outs on this but apparently the wait time is considerably shorter so it might be worth looking into I just wanted to mention it in case it is something that anyone out there hasn't been made aware of because from what I've heard people have had really really positive experiences and also managed to be seen and assessed quicker which of course is what you want I think it's so difficult when you've been told that you need assessing and then you start putting the pieces together and thinking this might be the answer and then you've got to wait two years what a horrible wait because you're just thinking all the time well my life could improve so much when I just get that help and just get that treatment or even just the very knowing that you've got it can be helpful and healing in itself and I think it's just really painful to have to wait for that long yeah leave that with me obviously I'm not going to be able to change the NHS or the system I really wish that I could I wish I had millions of pounds that I could throw into it if I did I would I really really would but I will at least try and do my bit even in some tiny tiny way even if it's just by filming these videos you know there is of course the other option of going private now there are various different places that you can go private including psychiatry uk adhd 360 i didn't go private i do know somebody who has and has had a really good experience they literally got seen in about a week i think it was and they've had really really good support from them of course it does cost a lot of money and i understand that cost of living for a start but also it's just money that a lot of people don't have so obviously going private is not an option for everyone but if you are financially able to then you can go and get your assessment done privately now the only thing to remember with this is if you then get diagnosed if you choose to go on medication then I have been told that you can request for your care to be handed back over to the NHS once you've been diagnosed but I will just say just to warn you, I have heard some people saying that the NHS have refused to take over their care. So they are having to pay extortionate prices for their medication and their appointments and so forth. So it's not always just a case of paying for the assessment and then you're on your way. It could be a longer term investment. And I do think people need to be made aware of that because personally, I have chosen to take medication and I know that's not everyone's preference but if I'd got my diagnosis been off of medication and then couldn't afford it I think I'd have just felt absolutely deflated knowing there's something that can help but not being able to do anything about it I've talked so much my lipstick's pretty much come off there is one thing I will say just on that topic before I move on and I'm just going to keep this really brief. As I've said, I know how lucky I've been getting that diagnosis so quick and I'll always be eternally grateful to the NHS for that and I'm also not pinning this problem or frustration on any particular doctor or anything but my diagnosis process was very quick and very smooth and I actually was offered to start on a medication 
basically within days of doing that assessment, which is so quick. The one thing I will just say, my initial experience was fantastic. The follow-up care has not been. Just in terms of getting hold of anyone to get a new prescription or to ask any questions, things like that, the communication is not great. I'm not complaining because as I say, I know we are so lucky to have the NHS, but these mental health services and ADHD services and, and probably many other services that I've never actually used myself and I'm sure some of you guys will relate. They are so terribly underfunded, so understaffed, people are so overworked and there's just simply not enough time for everybody to get that full 100% care that they should be. So I have had a few issues. Had I gone private, would I be receiving better follow-up care? Probably. That might change. Maybe people have been off for sickness or anything could have happened. I don't know. I don't know because I can barely ever get in touch with them. If you are going to go private, obviously research the place that you're spending your money on, make sure that it's official and uh, read the reviews, get other people's advice on how it was because yeah, it, it's not always what it says on the tin. I know that because I have paid for something privately in the past and it did not go well. That is an understatement of the year. I won't go into it, but I've spent a lot of money on something in the past where I've paid privately and it has been a disaster and caused me a lot of further issues. So yeah, just be careful. I'm gonna move on and I'm not gonna talk too much in this last section because I think it could warrant other videos where I can go into it a lot more thoroughly. But I will just go on to how I'm managing my ADHD now and Am I on medication? That kind of thing. So before my ADHD diagnosis, I'd actually been seeing a private therapist who has literally been a lifesaver and I feel really connected to her. I trust her so much. I talk to her about anything. Yeah, I've been having that for almost a year now. I've done a lot of therapy and I probably will for a while. Now that's to work on my eating disorder recovery, anxiety, depression all of the mental health side of things, processing trauma. It's person-centered therapy, they call it. Talking therapy is what I would call it. And basically, I can talk about whatever I want. It's quite dangerous for me because I can talk for England about the color of that tree. But yeah, that's been life-changing for me. And I know it will continue to do so. And particularly since I've been diagnosed with ADHD. Now, I'm not seeing an ADHD-specific therapist or specific coach because I also have a lot of other stuff going on. And a lot of people with ADHD do have mental health issues too. It's quite common. I do think just the very nature of having someone to talk to. I mean, my therapist understands ADHD. She's not specifically for ADHD, but she understands it and she understands me most importantly. So the labels of the diagnosis is diagnosi. I don't know how to say that and also I've got a lisp so that's terribly unfortunate. She understands me as a person and the labels don't really mean all that much in that space because at the end of the day everyone's different, everyone struggles with different things in different ways, no two people are going to have the same exact symptoms of ADHD or same exact symptoms of anorexia, it's just not how it works, we're all unique. It definitely helps me with my ADHD in turn just because everything interlinks doesn't it, I mean it's all going on in the same place. And I would recommend therapy to anyone. Now my therapist is a private therapist, which is obviously not something that everyone can do, but I would just say it's definitely worth looking into and researching different therapists, maybe on counseling directory or something. Because I always had this thing of, it's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of pounds a session. And I have paid that before, but it really doesn't have to be. There are a lot of therapists out there who charge really reasonable rates or have sliding scale fees. Therapy on the NHS is very, very difficult to get. There's often a very long way and it's often very time limited as well. So yeah, that is worth every penny for me. It's the best money that I spend every single week. I mentioned earlier, the doctor that diagnosed me asked me if I would like to try a medication and he recommended that I did. I was a little bit unsure just because in the past I have had some not such great experiences with different medications. However, I'd heard some incredible 
stories of how medication have changed people's lives so i thought Do you know what just give it a go if it doesn't work for you then you can come off it and i completely respect everyone's opinions and views on medication if it's not something that you want to do then that is completely fine i understand and it can be quite scary as well i had this thing where i thought well is it gonna make me not be me anymore am i gonna be boring <laughs> it's literally the worst insult you could ever give me i can be anything you like but if i'm boring there's a few different types of medication that you can be on for adhd i'm not a psychiatrist or a pharmacist so your best bet is to <laughs> have a little google but he decided to put me on something called concerta i'm gonna talk about my medication journey in a separate video because i do have quite a lot to say about it i will just say it's quite incredible how this medication works it's not one of them where you have to wait for weeks to see if it's going to make a difference it actually starts working within the first hour of taking it the only way i can describe it is it was like putting glasses on for the first time but in my head <laughs> everything just became clearer and i'm gonna leave it at that because i'm gonna film another video about medication and my experience because although i will say it's been hugely positive i also do have a few things that i would like to share there's also quite a few other things more practical things that i've put in place since being diagnosed and again i am going to talk about those things in the future as well because i want to you know share in case it helps someone else <sighs> i know that attention deficit disorder it does sound quite negative but there are some unbelievably successful people in this world who have adhd it does not mean that you will not achieve it does not mean that you will fail or that you are at a disadvantage to everyone else don't get me wrong, certain situations, yes, we find harder than neurotypicals, but there are also many things that we excel at. A lot of people with ADHD are very creative, they have amazing ideas, they're able to work really well under pressure when they've got a deadline. There is a website that my doctor actually told me about, I think it's called Aditude, I want to say, I'll link it below. There's hundreds of different articles on there about loads and loads of different things you know symptoms diagnosis research studies that kind of thing very interesting and there's also a lot of information about different celebrities who have adhd or you know people who've gone on to do incredible things and it can be really quite inspiring to read that it kind of gives you that spark and that hope to see that you might have had your struggles but it does not mean that you are not going to do everything that you dream of anyway i really hope that that video helped in some way of course if you have any questions whatsoever please do leave them below i'm really passionate about this topic i'm learning more and more every day of course it is still all quite new and quite raw to me so i'm learning with you and i will be posting on my tiktok pretty much every day my instagram just keeping you guys updated and if there's anything specific you would like a video on as well just let me know because I love to talk. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't film for such a long time. I've missed this. I really have. Give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new and I'm sure I will see you very, very soon. Bye.